Um, uh, what, what questions or confusions on the natural transformation front can I help address? Does anyone have a question up front or point of discussion? Yes, Xiao Yan. Yeah, um, I think for natural transformation, so for me is, um, I feel I'm kind of uh, confused or not kind of clear of uh, um, the comment that natural transformation is kind of a, a very strict thing. So, so it's something yeah. like, yeah, yeah. so. Yeah, okay. I, yeah, yeah, and um, I remember there is a figure in the last course is in the bottom le left corner. You yeah. have yeah plot a thing of yeah yes yeah okay. that, that that's, that's great because I just um, I just worked to make that figure a little bit less confusing. Uh, I had sort of drawn it out. I think in the uh, in the heat of the moment um, last fall or something, and I uh, I had sketched it out quickly, and I, I didn't really put a lot of care into it, and so now I touched it up a little bit. So so that's great. Um, so yeah, so natural it's an interesting thing because natural transformations are a pretty strict condition between uh, the compatibility of functors. So. Uh, the, ex the existence of a natural transformation from one functor to another is not a, not a given. Um, and uh, certainly you'll appreciate the fact that, you know, if we have, um, uh, let's suppose we have two categories here, maybe I'll, I'll draw that in a bigger thing. If we have one category and we have another category um, and we have, uh, see the screen. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Wade. Um, uh, I will, um, uh, do, 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 um, okay. Uh, right. Uh, so here we go. I'll share this screen. So suppose, so the basic, basic setup with natural transformations is the following, right? Um, uh, we have uh, two categories, and we have uh, two functors between those same two categories uh, going one way, one, you know, uh, going from one of those categories to the other. And, and both functors go in the same source category and the same target category. That's very important. Um, both here are from C to D. Mm. And uh, a natural transformation um, requires a commuting square of the following sort. And I think I have a, you know, a, a, this diagram maybe brings it out a little bit better yet. It's the same diagram, but I've, I've annotated it with a couple of remarks. First of all, I indicate that this, this square, the so-called naturality square has to be, has to commute. Uh, so no matter which way you go along the sides, whoa, uh, from this upper left to the lower right, it has to commute. So, oh, sorry, this way and then that way has to be the same morphism, exactly the same morphism when you compose those two as going this way to this way and you compose those two. Um, it has to be precisely the same morphism, the same mapping from FA to GB. Um, and moreover, uh, this has to hold for all morphisms F over here in the source category, right? Um, no matter what F we have, um, uh, this has to hold true. That it has to be that it, it doesn't matter whether you perform F, uh, the lifting of F with functor F or the lifting of F, sorry, the lifting of lowercase F of the morphism with functor capital F, um, or whether you lift it with capital G, the functor G, um, they need to give sort of comparable results. We can translate A into G first and then lift lowercase f with G, or we could first lift lowercase f with uh, the morphism with F, 
you know, do the version of the morphism applied to F, the generalization of the morphism for functor F, uh, and then and then map over it has to be the same. And and you could say, wow, you know, for for any F, is is that right? And the answer is, yeah, it has to be true for any F. G, F and G sort of interpret it in compatible ways that you can do it in one and translate over, do it in the other and translate over, uh, or, or do it, translate over first and then do it in the other. And um, another thing though, that has, that's maybe a more basic thing is, look, there have to be morphisms, like alpha A and alpha B are morphisms here, um, going between F A and G A. If there's no morphisms, if, if, if F maps it over, to a few objects here, and G maps it over to other objects here, which have, you know, even one of those doesn't have a morphism to the other, then there's no natural transformation. There's no way to kind of do this first and then get over because there's none of these or, or none of these. Um, and, and so it can't be any arbitrary functor. It can't be any arbitrary category D. Um, this this says that there's some sort of, of compatibility here. And what I had talked about is that like this other functor could, like one of the functors, the, the target of the natural transformation, natural transformations are directional. They go from functor F to G. Just because there's a natural transformation from F to D, G doesn't mean there's a natural transformation from G to F. Um, and, you know, G might be more coarse grained than F. G might collapse things that are distinguished in F. And yet the natural transformation, a natural transformation that exists despite this um, says when you collapse it, what you have to do is kind of compatible if you didn't collapse it. Um, now, uh, an example of, of that from programming um, would be something like this. Um, I didn't present this last time, but it, it bears noting. Like you could have a natural transformation here that's like the is nothing. So natural transformations of programming, the Haskell context are polymorphic functions. So they're functions which apply with parametric polymorphism, they apply to all type arguments, right? So we have is nothing, um, which is a function from A to Bool, where A is a, is a type variable, um, it's a type parameter. Um, and uh, it, sorry, is nothing goes from maybe of A to, to Bool. Um, and it could go from maybe of int, it could go from maybe of, of bool, it could go from maybe of double, whatever. Um, but they go to bool, and bool is the result of a constant functor. It's a result of a, of a functor that maps uh, any object here, maps int into bool, bool into bool, double into bool, tree into bool, list into bool, list of a, or list of n into bool. Whatever, they're mapped into bool. This is about as coarse grained as you can get. It sort of collapses many things. But there's a natural transformation here um, that's rather pleasing, right? Like, um, it, let's suppose you have an is negative function. Um, uh, that's your function lowercase f. That's our lowercase f. And um, if we start with a maybe of int and we apply, we lift is negative to that maybe of int, we get a maybe of bool. Great, you get a maybe of bool. So maybe the maybe of int is just three. And we asked, is it negative? And we get a just false because three is not negative. And then we could translate over with the natural transformation. This is the so-called component of the natural transformation, right? This is just like a squished square where these two things, sorry, where these two 
sorry, these uh, these two have been mushed together. They've been collapsed together. They've been glommed together, GA and GB. Uh, it's it's the same square, but they kind of it it combined these these two here. And um and, and we got that. So it collapsed them. It's just like this diagram here where these two things were independent, but here they got they got glommed together. They kind of collapsed it. This functor G, when it mapped uh, this B and this D, mapped them to the same object, uh, excuse me, um, it mapped two things. It mapped uh, this uh, mumble, E and D to the same object, right? E and D both got mapped to this object. Whereas uh, functor F didn't map them to each other. So it's a, a very comparable situation uh, to what we're dealing with, with here. Um, so this is the kind of naturality square, which is degenerate into a naturality triangle. Um, so we could go do that. So we start with a just of three, we get a just of false. And then we ask, is it nothing? And we get false. Uh, it's not nothing. It has a just of false. Uh, it's it's not a nothing. Um, or maybe we have a, a maybe of or just of minus three. If we map is negative, we lift is negative to apply to that, we get a maybe of true, right? And we ask, is that nothing? The answer is false as well. Um, but maybe, maybe, or maybe event is nothing, and we map it with is negative. And what do we get out? If we map is negative on a nothing, on a maybe, we lift is negative to operate on a maybe whose value is nothing. What do we get out? What's the result of that? What's the result of, of lifting is negative to apply to a maybe whose value is nothing? Anyone? The answer is, if all you have is a nothing, you try to lift is negative to it, you get out, it gets with an N. It's not my name. It ends with a G. Nothing, sorry. It's, it's nothing, <laughs> yes, it's nothing. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, it's you get nothing out. Because, um, so, so you get a nothing here. So you start with a nothing, you, you get a nothing here, and then you map to it, you ask, is it nothing? And the answer is yes, yeah, it's nothing. Boom, uh, you, you get true. Uh, okay, so you could have done that. Now for each of those, let's take the case of nothing. We could have instead just started at a maybe event that's nothing. And we could have said, is that nothing? And the answer is yes. And we get the same answer as if we went this way through this whole song and dance about applying is negative to it and getting nothing and then asking if that's nothing. And the answer is yes. We could have just gone straight to the chase and asked here because going this way didn't, didn't change the answer. Um, uh, if if we had started with just three, we could have asked, "Is that nothing?" And the answer is no. It's false. It's not nothing. And that's guaranteed to be the same answer as when we compose these two morphisms and get out false. That we we say just three map is negative to it. We get just false. And then we ask, "Is that nothing?" And the answer is no. Uh, it's false. Uh, same thing with just minus three. So the point is, this is coarse graining, but there's still a natural transformation here. It's it's beautiful. There's there's coarse graining going on, but but kind of what what it means to lift is negative on the constant functor is just the ID. It just preserves its value. It just keeps the value. So if the value is False and bool, it'll preserve false. And you know, it knows if you translate it into a bool, 
if you have maybe event and you know and then you map it to a maybe a bool you're not going to change whether it's nothing or not um so this is an example of a natural transformation which collapses but is robust it's it's actually a robust natural transformation it works beautifully swimmingly um for any function here any function you know is positive is perfect square um you know um is even whatever um uh is a fibonacci number uh whatever it is this will be preserved now now you could be excused as a haskell programmer for saying well what's the big deal here uh it's got to be the case that you're specifying one rule for is nothing and this will always hold like if you have one rule for is nothing for any type um you know is nothing of maybe of a if there's a certain rule for it well yeah it has to hold for different a's now okay so what's the big deal of course it's gonna hold well yes that's true for haskell because haskell is this very strong condition of parametric of parametric polymorphism here or parametric um polymorphic functions which are defined the same for all of these types um and so they have the same rule but in general when you're dealing with a, a general category not in hask by the way this is hask this is hask c and d are both hask here and f and g are or list and uh, mumble um uh, where was i here um you know maybe in constant functor are here endo functors mapping from has to has um it is automatically true it's guaranteed naturality is guaranteed and that's really nice for compilers it's really nice for optimizations but in general it won't be true you know if you have an arbitrary category there's no guaranteeing that the lifting of of uh, lowercase g, for example, um, that the lifting that's done um, for the the version of mm, 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 how do I put it um, uh, the the mapping here, like alpha b for for uh for this b object as it gets mapped or mapping for alpha a there's no guarantee that those have to be compatible or let's say for b and for e there's no guarantee that um uh that they like like if there's an arbitrary morphism between where b is mapped in this sheet by f capital f and where it's mapped in this sheet by capital G, those two functors, there's no guaranteeing that there's a morphism between them that uses kind of the same general rule or a consistent rule for B uh, as it as exists for a morphism for E. That's the magenta one here, like. Uh, like maybe there's no morphism at all for one of those or maybe the morphisms they have do weird things and th the morphisms that are available do weird things and and there's no way to kind of have it first be able to go over and then down and still be the same as oh now i'm in a pickle i should have picked i should have picked the not the magenta but the d um or go this way and then down um so i, I should have said alpha g uh this this guy is gray um so there's no guarantee that these are nice morphisms that are are somehow compatible that coming down like this going like this that there exists a morphism that will kind of have the same effect as seen through the lens of G, a functor G, um, that it will have the effect going either way. Maybe there isn't uh, a morphism that accomplishes that in this category, 
uh, or, or, or maybe more to the point, where, um, where these uh, data points, these objects are mapped to, maybe there's not a morphism between those here uh, within, you know, within this, uh, between the, where they're mapped by F and by G. Maybe F squirrels them away in some area of D where there's no nice mappings down that will be compatible to where G is. And so it's a kind of strong condition. And the other part of it that you mentioned to, that Bartosz Miluski appeals to is with this. Um, uh, and I actually have that diagram up here, um, or I did. Uh, yeah, here we go. Okay. So, you know, here, uh, if we consider, okay, where does like this guy go to? The green, right? Um, uh, the green, um, I'm just going to go to this sort of flub it up. So green, let's, let's go map green over this way. And we want to make sure that it's the same as this way. So green... And, and what I'm trying to communicate here is that, that if you pick this alpha A, kind of alpha B has to be a certain way. And so it, it's quite rigid about what alpha B could be. Um, like once you pick alpha A, it largely determines alpha B or uh, determines a lot of alpha B. And so if there's not an alpha B, in the category between where F maps B to, this FB, and where, uh, where G maps B, this guy here, then we're, again, we're in a pickle because we can't fulfill the tight criteria of natural transformation. So let's think about this. So, um, we're going to go around uh, around this way first, the top and then down. So green is mapped via the lifting of F by cap by functor capital F into this green here. Okay, uh, go green. Um, and uh, and then it's going to be mapped down to this guy uh, here. Okay, um, and uh, we know that's what happens when we compose these two, these two morphisms, uh, this morphism here. Hey, okay, why, why aren't you selecting that? Well, uh, there, that morphism and this, uh, yeah, morphism there. Um, we, we, we map this guy to this guy. Great. Um, going down this other way, um, uh, Okay, I should have done it the other way because I want to emphasize alpha B depends on alpha A. Um, but if we map green to here, um, and then it's mapped over with uh, with GF into I should have should have shown it explicitly um, into this one, this green one here, then this upper and down needs to map it to exactly that. So in other words, um, like this has to hold true for any F, for any F. And so if lifting the F with capital G um, maps this a certain way, um, then, you know, knowing what this, what this morphism is, um, will tell you pretty much what alpha B has to be because it has to accomplish, um, you know, this basically alpha A is picking some, some object or some element here within GA to which this is mapping. And depending what element it is, think of this for now as a function, it has to pick this element mapped to by green. And depending on what that is, like alpha B has to somehow accomplish, no matter what F is, 
that when this is mapped uh, over there, it's mapped down to, to the green one. So alpha B has to kind of be compatible with alpha A. It, it depends largely on alpha A. If we know alpha A, the rule for alpha A, um, we, we largely know the rule for alpha B because uh, you know, we need this to hold for any F and for, uh, and for any F here. And uh, we're gonna need to, no matter what the F is, uh, when, when we go around this way uh, or this way, we need this green to be mapped to the same way both ways. So alpha B is the conduit this way, alpha A is the conduit this way, and they have to map in compatible ways. So alpha B is largely determined by alpha A, and therefore there needs to be a morphism for a natural transformation to exist where you know, this can be kind of compatible in how it handles things um, as, as, this, as this one. That, that's kind of how I think about it. Now, Bartosz does know like alpha B um, is not entirely determined for a single F, because like maybe when you map with FF, um, both of these go to a subspace of FB. It doesn't map to the entire thing. It's not a surjection. And as a result, these ones, you know, uh, need to be mapped into this quarter, but it doesn't really tell us what this has to do. But for a different one, FG, you know, it'll be mapping to different subquarters of folk. Of F of, of this FB space. And you know that that needs to be handled by alpha B. So alpha, whatever alpha B does, it has to be coordinated with alpha A in a way that it maps kind of consistent with how alpha A maps. Um, recognizing that this is that this uh, commuting has to occur for any F. Therefore, we could probably cover a large part of this FB, or it may well be it's a large part of FB. Um, the elements just have to be mapped in corresponding ways. Uh, you know, when we, when we lift it with capital F and lift it with, um, with capital G. So that's kind of how I think about it. But Shaw, yeah, yes, you you have a, a follow-on. So tell me yeah. where you're you're having trouble thinking about it. Yeah, um, I'm I'm just kind of thinking. So here for the alpha b. So for the alpha b, is it a single morphism or a set of morphism? Uh, alpha, alpha b. Yeah, uh, yeah. From alpha F b is a single morphism. Oh. Okay, so um, it seems I'm I'm previously thought what it happens maybe from um, so so if we choose the morphism of F in C, so maybe here uh, in the D we have um, alpha B F we see, but okay, then so, we sorry, choose. Sorry, yeah. sorry, uh, I I missed something. So you're yeah. saying you previously thought that if you pick the what the the morphism in the category of C with F, because um, the there morphism are... with category C with F, like this yeah. one, yeah. like this one here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh huh. If we pick that, uh huh. Yeah. The reason is be uh, be because between two objects, there may be more than one morphism. So so Correct. if we choose, yeah. So if we choose um, F then I think probably there is a pair of uh, alpha A, F, oh, alpha B, no. F, and then, yeah. No, so great point, great point. So I see, that is, wow, what a beautiful, what a beautiful uh, confusion to have. What a wonderful point to make. Um, uh, so, so this, um, do, 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 what's, what's the best way to do it? I think it's to probably draw it like, like this. Um, and I'll use, I'll use 
black. Um, black is back. Okay. Um, so, so these morphisms uh, here um, kind of draw these lightning arrows to avoid confusion that they're morphisms in the category. Oh, what a what a mangled arrowhead. Um, okay, sorry. Um, my drafting instructor would have been horrified at my um, use of that. Okay. Um, so these are um, um, humble. Um, so uh, these morphisms, uh, these components uh, of the natural transformation need to uh, are independent of choice of oops, choice of F, right? Um, so, okay, okay, no, no, no. Uh, okay. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I don't think it, it does this very well. Okay. Um, well, there's two ways to, to skin a cat. Um, uh, so one thing I could do is, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. In any case, I think, I think you get it. I'll prettify this later. But um, the, the point is that um, these, these things need to be the same regardless. They are only identified, they're fixed for the natural transformation. Given an A, there is a single morphism alpha A. Mm. And there's a single morphism alpha B that is invariant of, that doesn't change with F, okay? That is an absolutely beautiful key point and, um, and our, uh, you know, is, is kind of foundational in here and, you know, helps probably understand why it's so, uh, so important, right? Um, uh, in other words, why it's so rigid, why it's, uh, it gives so little flexibility, right? Um, so uh, I, I hope that's helpful, Shadia. Um, yeah, thank you. So, okay. yeah, sorry, so um, Sorry. So I have a final um, kind of a question. So it's like, as long as we have choose the functor of F and G, yeah. So so there will be a single uh, morphism between the uh, two object in D, like F A G A F B G B or F C G C. Okay. So sorry, I was distracted by by throbbing um, lines. So uh, say that again. Uh, oh, what you just yeah. said was a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, since the um, natural morphism is kind of uh, uh, dependent by the functors. So in this case, it's like, as long as we have fixed the two functors F and G, then in the category D, um, there would be only one single morphism from F A to G A, F B to G B, then F C G C or F E G B, something like that. Correct, so, so, so for a given, pair of functors, capital F and capital G, there, for a natural transformation to exist, there must be, for each object map to, well, F and G both map all objects, right? So for each object in C, there must be a component of this natural transformation between F, call this object C uh, in category C, there must be a, for each such object in, C, in, cap, in category C, there must be a morphism in D uh, between FC and GC such that for all morphisms F, lowercase f, uh, 
this, uh, you know, emanating from C, uh, this naturality square holds. Uh, that's that's a little bit of a of a mouthful, but um, what it's saying is like if you pick uh, if you pick an A, um, or yes, uh, so so I didn't phrase that quite well. Um, so for each object uh, C in in category C. Um, there needs to be a component of the natural transformation um, linking FC, capital FC to capital GC, that um, su such that uh, for any morphisms um, from C to any other object, let's call it B, um, uh, this naturality square has to hold that you have to be able to go around either of these sides and it's exactly the same morphism um, uh, that maps FA to GB. Um, that, that, that would be basically the, the restriction there or the definition. And note that alpha A and alpha B, alpha C, et cetera, those are all Independent of the um, uh, of this uh, this morphism lowercase f over in, in C, this is uh, has to hold true for a given fixed one of these and fixed one of those. That's part of the natural transformation. These collectively, alpha A, alpha B, alpha C, these define the natural transformation alpha. We talk about as the natural transformation alpha. This is just like talking about, you know, you have a function f and you have f of zero and you have f of one and you have f of two and f of three. It's just the different, you know, sort of elements of it. But Wade had a question there too. Yeah, I think I, I was just going to wonder if, uh, like, if there was a morphism from fb back to fa. Would that it invalidate the case of a natural transformation? No, no, no. You could have a great question. So suppose you had um, suppose you had a um, uh, bidirectional morphisms. Um, so suppose you had a uh, a morphism here. Uh, like uh, running out of colors. No, I already had that one. Um, green. Okay. Um, green is the color. Uh, it, that's great. Um, uh, so if you have a morphism like this, uh, that doesn't invalidate it because uh, that can still, you know, as long as there's a morphism like this and like this that satisfy these for each object in C as mapped to here, um, that have this naturality square, uh, the fact that there's this additional morphism over here doesn't, uh, doesn't harm the situation. Um, it doesn't help, it doesn't give you more choice of one of these or one of these but it doesn't hurt either right um uh now what it what's not the case like it's not going to be the case just because you have morphism like this that there's a natural transformation in the reverse direction that might might well not be the case and in fact for our this um for this case we saw earlier where we have this coarse graining um Mm -mm -mm. Um, this one that's not the case like like there's no there's no natural transformation from bool to maybe uh to maybe of a um th there's not going to be a natural transformation that way uh that uh is going to allow this right um 
Yeah, so so that's the example of a non-natural transformation. It'll be an unnatural transformation. Uh, if, if we tried to create a, a a natural define a natural transformation the bool to maybe of a, we'd get something really kind of weird, right? Um, so we would need like a separate morphism that goes <laughs> now could you could you build one i separate uh, so it would be a morphism now okay so all these different objects map to this guy like int maps to this guy bool maps to this guy so it need to be something okay yeah so there's a um a different it would be you know, imagine flipping the arrows here it'd be a morphism this way and a morphism this way uh and and what would that be well let's suppose it just created suppose this just created um nothing right and it just created a, a maybe that was nothing um okay so it mapped this to this this to this whatever the type is it creates a, a nothing of you know of, of a maybe for that type so if it's a maybe of double, it creates a nothing of maybe of double. If it's a maybe of bool, it creates a nothing of that. Okay, uh, that, that would be, okay, so so is that a natural transformation? Okay, so, so if we had, consider this, oh, sorry, consider now uh, uh, this morphism. Um, this morphism, oh, okay, now we're, we're in a pickle. It's supposed to be a morphism here going from bool to int. Maybe it's like, um, maybe bool to int, it's like, um, uh, smallest even hood or something. <laughs> this is terrible. So this is like, you know, if it's false, it's one. If it's true, it's zero or something like that. It, just trying to come up with something right um uh so that could be a function that's one function goes from bool to end and you could uh you could say okay is it going to be natural going between oh no okay um is it going to be natural going between these two um so we we got those yeah uh yeah it would it would come commute because you'd lift it to operate on a nothing and it would give a nothing and this way it gives a nothing too but let's suppose that that not the the pretender to a natural so that would be a natural transformation if the reverse of these arrows for example were i should draw this out instead of leaving it to your imagination but if the reverse of these arrows were um uh were uh instead like uh create a nothing uh of this you know a nothing create a nothing and then it would work for any lifted function between bool and int but let's suppose it was some wacko thing again you have to break out of ad hoc polymorphism let's suppose the mapping from bool to maybe of int created a just zero and the bool for you know, mapping from bool to maybe a bool created true. Um, and suppose the maybe mapping a bool to double created zero or something, 0, 0, whatever. Um, then it would break this naturality because there'd be certain functions that wouldn't map nicely onto that where like if if you did them on a maybe event that was zero you you wouldn't get out the same value that needs to, that was created by this weird mapping from bool to maybe a bool it it wouldn't like it wouldn't be invariant of that if you if you did uh if you did this first it would be different than doing this if you went on this way around the triangle it would be different than that I, I I'm probably so confusing you, but uh, I was I was 
hoping to avoid opening that up, but um, uh, natural. Um, I was hoping to 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 find this. Um, but Shayan, you had a question. Maybe I can find this and and actually draw it. So Shayan, you had a question. Uh, um, not now. I think you have um a uh, a. Uh, clear it since i think if we reverse the morphism in the right we we reverse the f map maybe it's negative instead um, of inverse instead of a reverse the natural transformation uh okay um for uh okay so bool to int um okay um so like uh do, do, do. um so if we we went like like that right um yeah. can't do that nicely in a whiteboard um and we went like this oh oh sorry so i think no this is my confused part because i feel this two arrow is the natural transformation right these two this yeah. one and this one are the are the components of the natural transformation so they say okay. yeah but 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 why are there two of them tell me why there are two of those why are there two of these guys when i'm turning these around why not just one anyone tell me because remember what are these labeled by they're labeled by what the objects in C. The objects in C. So there's one of these for each object in C that maps to bool via the constant functor. Int maps to bool, so there's one for int. Bool maps to bool, so there's one for bool. Um, so um, so it there there's one of these for each of those uh each of those in c they are created in d at the behest of c to sort of borrow a rather nice phrase from david spivak um and uh this this so this would be like i don't know like minimum evenhood <laughs> I, I, I don't know it's like um or binary by uh, integer integer encode yeah that's nice right uh if it's if it's true it turns into one i'm oh, sorry it turns it uh yeah uh, yeah say turn it to one and otherwise it turns it to zero or something like if, if it's false it turns it into zero okay um sure uh and then uh this guy is um is uh integer even hood oh sorry integer encode uh integer encode yeah um uh and this is integer encode boom okay um that that will actually work like this, this is a natural transformation. Do you understand why? Like if you go, oh, is this uh, right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, does this guy go from bool? Uh, yeah, it goes from bool to int. So when we lift it, it goes from maybe a bool to maybe a pen. So this, if you go this way with make nothing, you get a nothing that happens to be a maybe a bool. And then if you go this way with integer and code, um, it's going to map to what? If, if you lift integer and code, which goes from bool to int, you map it onto a nothing. You lift it and map it onto a maybe a bool that's nothing. What do you get out? You get out, I said it earlier. Nothing. Nothing. It's a maybe a int. And that's a maybe event. It's a maybe event. Exactly. And that gives the same result as going directly here. Like 
creating a maybe a, a make nothing of it. So that would, this is actually a natural transformation, but Cheyenne has a question on it. Cheyenne. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, I feel I'm kind of confused. So does, uh -huh. does this natural transformation is from functor maybe to functor constant functor? Oh. This is a natural transformation from constant functor mapping to bool to maybe. Oh, okay. It's going but, from constant okay. functor to maybe. The, the previous one was going from maybe to constant functor, right? Like, oh, uh, I see. So, yeah, I this see. This one was going from, oh, no, no. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, th this one was going from maybe to constant functor. That's why these components of the natural transformation went from a maybe to a bool, right? Yeah, yeah, so, so, yeah, so, uh, why, why we reverse the, why we reverse the natural transformations direction? I mean, because, why, yeah. yeah. Yeah, great question. So the answer is that because, well, here, this was a natural transformation for, so the, the arrows of the components, so each, component of the natural transformation is a morphism, right? It's a morphism in D. Hmm? Um, here it happens to be the same as C, but but whatever it is, it's a it's a each component of the natural transformation, alpha, is some morphism in D. Going from F of A to G of A. Okay. What is F here? F here is maybe G here is constant functor. We are looking for a natural transformation from F of A, from F to G. What, what is that? So, um, so, so therefore, well, so it's a natural transformation from F to G. So all the components go from F of A to G of A. F here is maybe, G is bool. So I'll, I'll, I'll put it in here. So F, uh, uh, F uh, of A equals maybe of A and G of A equals bool. It's just a constant functor. Um, so constant uh, functor, um, you know, sub bool. Um, it maps it to 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 bool. And so all the components go from F. F A to G A, just like that. So uh, components components go F A uh, to G A, like this. Mm -hmm. uh, that that's the job of the natural transformation is to translate from how F sees A to G sees A. How remember the head of the human versus so we have head hood. And this is the head of the human, and this is the head of the dog, right? The head of the human and the head of the dog. This is A over here. This is the head of the human. This is category C. And this is the head of the human and the head of the dog, more mapping between. Um, now, for ours here, uh, for ours, um, the one we where is it? Um, Reese, uh, it was reversed, reversed. Um, uh, okay, I'm um, I'm really confused because I, I put it is somewhere. It, is that uh -huh. the the fourth one, the bi-directional one? I'm not sure. Uh, I don't, there was oh. a bite. Uh, okay. A bite. This one. Yeah. No. Oh, sorry. No. No. no I, 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 I don't know whether it's gone. Um, whether it flew. Sometimes they end up up here, but uh, no. <laughs> so, um, okay. Uh, I keep on collecting these bogus Saskatchewan ads that show, like, 
the world's most dangerous bridge is in Saskatchewan. I keep on getting these stupid ads that like try to interest it's clickbait, right? The abandoned mountain military fortress in Saskatchewan. I love that one. Um, and it shows this craggy mountain with a with a with a abandoned pillbox on it of a fortress. And yeah, like that's in Saskatchewan. The world's Jeff Bezos is mansion is in Saskatchewan. I love that. Um, anyway, uh yeah, so somehow I lost it, but um, uh, but the basic deal is when it's the reverse, we are going from F, uh, we are going from bool, and, and so F was bool, the constant functor is bool, and then G was the um, uh, was maybe, and so it was kind of the reverse. Um, I, I'm, um, I'm I'm really puzzled where that went, but. Um, it's not the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't know if that's uh, helpful, Shayan. Um, I, I'm not sure because I feel uh, if we reverse the morphism in C, we can simply only reverse the morphism in C, but the natural transformation can still from F A to J A something. Oh like yeah. That. Yes, well, that's what I was trying to communicate to, to Wade. I mean, um, um, oh, yeah. Okay, um, this is uh, something I was trying to communicate to Wade earlier. So, um, so I'll just say reversed. Um, okay. Um, so the basic deal with the natural transformation. Um, uh, 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 basic, um, too many basics, uh, natural transformation, uh, basic here. Um, like there could be a morphism here, um, or there's one called multiple, multiple functions here. Um, there we go. There could be one going in the reverse direction, right? Like this, um, um, like the, the, this guy. Maybe I'll make it. Um, there could be something like this, and that doesn't harm. Oh, um, sorry, Doctor Osgood. Sorry, there is a big black square cover the figure. There's a big black square. Oh, okay, another is it, one. Is it this square? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. No. It's okay. Oh, gosh. Yeah. That that comes. So there's a window created in the background by Zoom that for some reason says return to the meeting, and it's away in the background. I don't know what. Like it's not in the foreground of my computer, but of my windowing system. But somehow it 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 thinks it's in the foreground, and it creates a big black box. Um. In Saskatchewan. Um. So. Uh. So there could be a morphism like this, right? Like let's call it H. And like the, the fact that there's a morphism here doesn't impair there being a, uh, a natural transformation from F to G. Just because there's a morphism in the other way doesn't hurt the existence of a natural transfer. It doesn't make it more constrained or anything. Um, but what it does do is opens up opportunities for there being a natural transformation in the reverse direction, right? Like, like conceivably there could be a natural transformation from G to A. If there's no morphism like this, then there's no way there's a reverse natural transformation because there's some objects where there's, um, uh, 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 do I, is that true? Actually, sorry. Sorry. Okay. Uh, no, that's not true. Um, it's it, the question, the thing that would enable or disable there being a natural transformation the reverse direction would be what the question of whether there's an, uh, an arrow like this. It, it's actually not, not dependent on there being an arrow like that. Um, so I, I misspeak. Um, so if there were an arrow like this, um, this, so for to, to address Wade's question, 
there's an arrow like this. Um, it does not require, that's, that's really interesting. Um, there's an arrow like that, right, right, right. Um, okay, this is very interesting. Um, if there's an arrow like that, then, you know, FA goes to F, F, B, F, you know, or F, F, A goes to F, A, uh, B, A goes to, to, um, or sorry, D goes to F, B, A goes to F, B, <laughs> A goes to F, A, B goes to F, B, great, okay, and so this will be lifted as well by the functor, it has to lift all morphisms, so there needs to be a morphism now induced between this guy and this guy. Okay. Yeah. Great. Uh huh. Um, and and similarly, when you map them with G, G has to map all morphisms in C. It can't can't take a pass on that. It's mapping A and B, and therefore the morphism H has to go between GA and GB. I'm sorry, GB and GA. There it goes, just like that. Okay. Okay. Now, now we've got an interesting situation. Okay, and this is capital F H. And this is capital G H. This is the lifting of H so that it operates on Fs, right? So, so it's just like we lift, you know, is even to go from a, or, or we could have a is, you know, lift encode, you know, encode is int or something to go from a list of bool to a list of Fs, great. Uh, we could have this, this like that, okay? And then there needs to be a naturality square. So this, this um, naturality square does have to hold for all these morphisms. Uh, so this naturality square has to hold for these ones as well. Mm. Mm. Never really pondered that before, but it's completely true. Because what we call A and what we call B is kind of, Arbitrary. We could have called this guy A and could have called this guy B. Um, so this naturality square has to hold, you know, um, either way um, between these. Um, that's that's actually a, a, a quite um, quite strong condition. So I don't think it would invalidate uh, invalidate it. It would just um, mean now you've got these additional mappings um, here over which it still has to maintain naturality. And the key thing with naturality is like, uh, it shouldn't be doing something really funky. Um, you know, it's very type specific because if it does something that's type specific, then translating it first into a different type and then doing it will be different than doing it first in the type it's at now and then translating it. Um, it will give different results. Uh, so these, these guys, you know, can't do anything too type specific. Um, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. But wouldn't that be ad hoc polymorphism if they did? Yeah, which is not allowed. So this is precisely right. So in Haskell, Haskell is this extremely strong condition for, for parametric polymorphism. It requires parametric parametr parametricity for, for um, these polymorphic functions. Um, there are ways of achieving, you know, the, the ad hoc polymorphism and, and Haskell with type classes being foremost amongst them. But, um, but this is, if we have a polymorphic 
function and we use the same rule for all types, it automatically gives us naturality, is the thing. So is naturality a strong condition? It's extremely strong, but parametric polymorphism is an even stronger condition. So it automatically gives you naturality. This is the result called Theorems for Free by Phil Wadler. Uh, and, and therefore it may not seem like a strong condition, but it is, it rules out some pretty weird things where, you know, like alpha A does not play, like, like there's no morphisms that play nicely together. They do weird, very specific things based on the encoding of this particular type that's idiosyncratic, you know, um, and, and those things won't be natural uh, because if we convert, if we map the types first and then, uh, sorry, if, if we apply a function first that maps the types and then convert over, it'll do one thing uh, for, the, for this component. Whereas if we do this component first, it'll do another weird thing. Um, uh, and then, and then we map over. So, so if you know you you need you need a mapping between functors that's well behaved. And parametric polymorphism guarantees it. It guarantees that like all of these components play by the same rules. They play by the same code, and therefore by you know, of necessity, they're lawful. They, they live by the same code, literally and figuratively. They, they have completely compatible ways of doing things. And that's what guarantees the, um, this, this nice feature uh, of, of uh, natural transformations being guaranteed. So when we write a polymorphic, function in Haskell, we, uh, we can, you know, the maps from one natural transformation to another, say from list to maybe, or, you know, uh, pair to list or what have you, we can be assured that it is natural. And, but there are all sorts of weird cases in category theory where that might not be the case. And it's just that it Haskell it makes it really nice. And so you almost don't have to worry about naturality, which is great for, for Haskell. Yeah. Okay, so we've, we've fielded a lot of interesting questions today. Um, would you like to do one more session on, on naturality? I, I did have, you know, some additional materials, like I have some questions, I right, some, so with an eye towards future coverage, I, I have some natural transformations that are central to monadic, to you know, viewing monads as, as monoids in the category of endofunctors. Um, I also have some, um, a bunch of examples of things that could be natural transformations, but I want you to puzzle through them. Uh, we could discuss these as well. In fact, I'm tempted to put some of these into a little exercise, but we could discuss these in class next time if, if you'd like to. Um, I also have some material on composition of natural transformations, both from a software engineering standpoint and from a standpoint of, of category theory. Um, and this stuff, you may recall, it actually comes in when we're dealing with monads. Um, so uh, uh, it's, you know, it would be new, fairly new material to you, but would have encountered a little bit before. So we can either do another session on natural transformations. And if one person wants to do that, I think we'll do it. Or we can go on to profunctors. Uh, let's take another vote. Uh, who wants to do, oh, look at that, there's a poll. Um, uh, oh, uh, uh, yeah. Um, okay, maybe I'll just do an informal poll. Uh, who would like to go on 
to uh, who would like to do one more session on on natural transformation? Okay. Yeah, do natural transformation. It's uh, not quite by acclamation, but it's it's a strong strong signal. Okay, we're going to do natural transformations, but I will send you, and I'll point it out here, um, and I'll I'll I should do my screen sharing. Um, I'll, I'll post these slides, but you could see at the last slide too. I'm going to ask you. Uh, it's actually for next. Uh, Wednesday for for Wednesday, okay. Um, English is horrible for Wednesday for this coming Wednesday. Um, uh, I'd I'd like you to review two sets of materials for this coming Wednesday on pro functors, okay. Um, one is from Bartosz's course, uh, Category Three Theory Three, and you could pat yourself on your back being in level three um he has three courses and this is maybe halfway through the third course or most of the way through i think um there's um there's also this material from programming with categories both are subsets of the videos but it'll be helpful to look at them and you'll find that the material it reminds you of what we covered when we talked about contravariance um uh and You'll see, you'll see this view of sort of profunctors as uh, as characterizing relations between things, um, uh, like profunctor applied to a object A and object B is finding relations between A and B, or finding ways to get from A to B, for example, um, as an example of relation. But it does it in a beautiful way that. If you lift functions, one is pre-composed with it, one is post-composed, one is contravariant, one is covariant, and it all works out uh, beautifully. So you can get from set it from A to B. You start with something that gets you from A to B, and you can reason about something that will get you from A prime to B prime. Um, so take start taking a look at profunctors. Profunctors are going to provide the keys for our understanding of, not surprisingly, profunctor optics lenses and prisms probably mention at least isos a little bit and and then that will give us a way into dynamical systems um because dynamical systems are generalized lenses um so um i think for wednesday we'll look at that start looking at that i think i'll give you a few exercises about whether things are natural transformations and we can Try to spend again more time in discussion next time. I'll try to clean up some of these diagrams and make that key point that Shayan was was asking about that the components of the natural transformation are fixed. It has to quantify over all morphisms f um, over all morphisms f, but these ones are fixed. Okay, um, uh, those are fixed. Uh, must be fixed um uh yeah must be constant they're, they're not changing with that okay okay that's all for today thanks very much and i'll get you some exercises take care there thank you thanks yeah.